Unit 13 Methods of Research Contents 13.1 Introduction Centrality of Research Methods in Social Sciences 13.3 Interface between Methodology and Methods 13.4 Elements of Research Methodology 13.5 Types of Data Used in Social Research 13.6 Research Methods 13.7 Conclusion Learning Objectives It is expected that after reading Unit 13, you should be able to appreciate the importance of research methods in social sciences, clarify the relationship between methodology and methods, state the elements of research methodology and the type of data generally used in research, social research, describes the various research methods. 13.1 Introduction Learning about research methods would help you find out how we get to know what we take as facts. Lack of adequate nutrition makes you suffer from malnutrition. Polluted water causes jaundice. Regular exercise keep one fit and free from common diseases. How do you come to these facts? Some researchers in some places must have carried out studies to find out each of the above facts. When you ask how a particular researcher has gone about making a study, you are basically inquiring about the researcher's methods. There are some common ways of carrying out one's research and un Unit 13 is going to talk about such methods. It will also describe the various steps in research process. The unit will also once again clarify the difference between methodology and method and explain the suitable relationship between the two terms. Understanding the way of systematic research is to prepare you to undertake your own mini research project. Please note that the project will comprise will comprise one of your assignments. 13.2 Centrality of Research Method in Social Sciences In the social sciences, the identity of the discipline depends largely on the methods its practitioners use. In other words, you cannot ignore the centrality of the methods in social sciences. Most of the social science discipline borrowed from methods from neutral nat natural sciences through the, though they study uh, matters quite different from matters in the natural sciences. As a result, the social sciences are continuously engaged in revolving their contradictions between the materials pertaining to social phenomena and methods belong to the study of natural phenomena. As mentioned in the introduction to block 4, the methods referred to technical rules are uh, that defines procedures for collection and analysis of data. If there are various methods of data collection, there are also several methods of data analysis, such as statistical inference, sampling and new forms of computer-based qualitative data analysis. There are also methods of research inquiry, such as the formulation of the research problem, method of constructing hypotheses, concepts, theories and propositions. If understood in this frame, methods lay down the procedure for generation of reliable and objective knowledge. Researchers are not free to formulate a questionnaire, conduct an interview or carry out participant observation the way they like. They need to follow definite and well accepted procedures to ensure that the knowledge generated methods turn out to be objective, authentic and reliable. 13.3 Interfere Interface between Methodology and Methods Once more to clarify, we draw your attention to the fact that methodology refers to the broad theoretical and philosophical frame into which the procedural fit, rules fit. The study of the interface between methods and methodology is called philosophy of social research. It explores the manner in which the broad philosophical and methodological orientations validate and authenticate the procedural rules for collection and analysis of data. According to Brewer, the, cause, the, the causal relationship could be stated in the following manner. The, process, the success of a research pursuit is largely determined by the methodology on which it is based. You already know that research methodology is broad frame of the research process. It elucidates the theoretical orientation with which the research process is to be carried out that gates the choice of methods and techniques to be used. Sociologists like to believe that while that what gives social research its scientific flavor is the inductive approach that helps researchers to arrive at broad generalization. 
you may be wondering why we are discussing methodology while unit 13 is on on method of research hope the above discussion has clarified that it is necessary to be clear about one's methodology in order to arrive at the procedural rules or methods of one's research this is why we are now going to discuss basic elements of methodology which in turn help us to decide the particular methods to be used before moving to section 13.4 it is a good idea to complete reflection and action 13.1 reflection and action 13.1 read the in, in the introduction to the book 1 and 2 and work out how theory and research are linked discuss what each contribute to the others then identify the a topic of your interest and specify the range of social phenomena this topic will address in reflection and action 13.2 you will continue this exercise 13.4 elements of research methodology the basic elements that build research methodology are concepts propositions and hypotheses theories the three elements provides the scaffolding to reach a research methodology all three elements are related to each other in a cyclic fashion while you can define a concept by using a theory the concept in turn shapes the content of the theories let us now acquaint ourselves with each of the three elements concepts concepts are building blocks of social research you can define a concept as a shorthand representation of a variety of facts it is the significant symbol component of social scientific language all concepts are essentially the uh, the abstractions of reality reality has several dimensions hence a concept can convey several meaning and impressions the concepts are defined according to the theoretical orientation of researcher and bring coherence to the abstraction of the phenomenon under study the concepts then form the basis of the theories box 13.1 defining for defining the term concept for, for box 13.1 babies definition of the term concept a concept is a mental image we use as summary device for bringing together observation and experience that seems to have nothing in common they do not exist in the real world so they can't be ensured directly babi has uh, further explained the word as conceptualization in the following words conceptualization is a process of specifying the vague mental image of of our concept sorting out the kinds of observation and measurements that will be appropriate for our research for measuring concept uh, you need to translate the concept into measurable indicators the propositions and hypotheses propositions and hypothesis propositions are the statement of interrelationships among concept the definition of a particular concept as a subject of research involve explicit and implicit contrast between the concept under consideration and the set of all other possible subjects chosen from the same universe for instance while inquiring into the domain of human groups with a special reference to peasants the term peasant is defined as a type of person or community having particular characteristic that contrast with urban dwellers tribals etc i suggest that you look once again at the unit 3 of book 1 to uh, learn more about hypothesis theories you can understand the theories as the system of concept and propositions that explain the relationships and underlying the principle characterizing a phenomenon there could be a grand range of theories which attempts to fit for our together in a logical pattern vast areas of human behavior there could be also a theoretical system with a modest scope involving smaller number of concept and proposition theories differ with the regards to their effectiveness as the story of proposition that can be tested by empirical research hence you can not say that a theory has been proved however successful verification of propositions of hypothesis always has implications for the theoretical systems to which it relates each such verification strengthens the theory it is time now to complete reflections of action 13.1 reflections and action 13.1 continuation of reflection and action 13.1 identify this and specify the major concept and variables relating to research topic 
derive at least one specific uh, testable hypothesis be sure your hypothesis reflect a specific relationship between two variables 13.5 types of data used in social research before moving on to the various methods used in social research let us understand the kind of data that are used in social research one is primary data which are collected by the researcher himself or herself the other is secondary data which are collected from sources such as library etc and the data mainly deal with the numbers and the tables and require a statistical analysis they are called quantitative data whereas if the data are descriptive and requires sociology or anthropology analysis they are called qualitative data let us now begin with the conclusion discussion of prevailing methods of social research 13.6 research methods we have already discussed the meaning of the term method and dis dis distinguished it from methodology this would also uh, allow you to remain sensitive to different connotations of term method you may come across the term in the sense of epistemological research and you we may also come across the term in the context of it used as tool of research our discussion of the following methods refers to both shades of meaning but it is more important the context of this uses as tools in research their discussion pertain to both in the ways of collecting and analyzing data you may also note that the methods specifically relates to quantitative and qualitative procedures sampling sampling survey intensive field work participant observations and case study etc will be elaborated at length in block, block 5 and block 6 of book 2 and 7 of uh, book 2 of 6 of book 2 and block 7 of book 3 therefore they may have they may not been included here for the generalized discussion of research methods evolutionary method we have learned while understanding the emergence of empiricism social research that the earlier social scientists stimulated the biological order social scientists stimulated the biological model in the study of society darwin's theory of evolution found parallels in social sciences it has presumed that social societies go though through the stages of transformation from simple to complex forms each change by itself result in minor modification in the phenomena but the cumulative effect of change over a long period of uh, is emergence of new usually more complex form it studies the cumulative effect of the series of changes by analyzing how each change brings together modification several sociologists opposed this method and called the method a tool to build historical descriptions which sounded artificial and superficial but at the same time one come to know the systematic like about the alternative conditions altered conditions of institutions through a long period of time the method allows a study of social change comparative method this is the oldest method in the social science and used in generate and analyze both kinds of data secondary and primary the positive like august comte called it as a reliable and scientific method of inquiry the evolutionists and diffusionists used it to explain the similarity of cultural traits and the progress of societies it was a simple exercise to break up cultural holds into traits and compare them to evolve theories of diffusion and evolution franz bos or 1940 who vehemently criticized the armchair theorist and came up with the idea of cultural relativism which accepts each culture as a unique identity and rejects the idea of comparison of traits across cultures bos emphasized the relevance of historical data and propounded the idea of studying cultures in the historical context this led to the emergence of uh, cult cross cultural studies and attempts were made to analyze the universal categories in each culture like kinship family marriage religion etc to understand the similarities of human societies all over the world cross cultural comparisons are the basis of the structuralism in anthropology especially of levi St strauss was pointed out the limitations of the comparative method he recommended a modified use of comparison within a smaller small well defined graphical area he called this method historical method gp mudrock mudrock uses statistical techniques to give a new dimensions to his comparisons but he prefers to call it 
a cross cultural survey according to him in order to understand what precisely the comparative method should be we must bear in mind the kind of problems to the solution of which it is directed there are two kinds which we can distinguish as synchronic and the young diachronic in synchronic study we are concerned only with the culture as it is at any given moment of its history the ultimate aim may be to define as precisely as possible the conditions to which any culture must conform if it is to exist at all we are concerned with the nature of culture and the social life along with the discovery of what is universal beneath the multitudinous differences that our data present hence we need to compare as many as diverse types of culture as well as possibly as we possibly can in a diachronic study of culture on the other hand we are concerned with the ways in which culture changes and seeks to discover the general laws of the process of change to study how the culture changes we have to first determine what culture really is and how it works thus the study of the of synchronic problems must necessarily to some extent precede the study of diachronic problems fred again states his own preference for the utilization of the comparative method on a smaller scale and with as much control over the frame of comparison as possible firstly it is natural to utilize religions of relatively homogeneous culture or work within social or cultural types and further to control the ecological factors in so far as it possible to do so secondly it is important to control the historical framework within which comparison takes place egan suggests that the method of control comparison oscar luis on other hand holds that there are only comparisons in anthropology and no comparative method with time the comparative method has undergone a tremendous change earlier scholars used his, his method to arrive at general laws about society but soon the realization dawned that arriving at general laws was not possible because of the complexity and diversity of social phenomena across societies by 1960 and onwards the main aim of comparative method shifted from the formulation of university valid generalizations to the production of accounts of specific cultures This emphasis on ethnographic specificity has produced data which is qualitatively different from the uh, produced by early studies. The cross-cultural studies fall in two categories: ideographic studies, which focus on particularistic details located in time and space, and nomothetic studies that focus on law-like generalization. Let us now discuss the historical method. Historical method. this method recognizes the uniqueness and dynamic nature of societies and culture the historical information paint pertaining to an entity which could be a society an institution or any phenomenon reveals a great deal about the nature of its social dynamism the data that doesn't take historical dimensions into account gives the impression of timelessness the historical methods collects facts by going to the past in different periods The sources of information include written records, newspapers, diaries, letters, traveler accounts, etc. Social researchers generally confine themselves to three major sources of historical information. First, are documents and various historical sources to which historians have access. Second, materials of cultural history and of analytical history. And third, personal sources of authentic observers and witnesses. when how and under the, what circumstances to use any of all these sources sources depend upon the discretion of researchers interest scope of their studies and availability of resources you can make direct use of documents when historians have not analyzed the events that they depict and others have not yet incorporated them into the writings of broader cultural historical settings you can also use them to supply a missing link in our knowledge of a particular social situation when historical documents depicts events or not of generalization but of centuries past it is generally useful for social researchers to utilize the existing secondary data which may be interpretations or analysis of their history but there are some of the following limitations to this method a historians cannot write history life size 
we not all happenings in time and space can be known at the time of writing c personal bias and subjective interpretations enter unconsciously at the same time historical data may be regarded as reliable and uh, adequate for social research a when you present a historical document as complexes of social forces b when the social phenomena meaningfully depicts intricate social processes and set of interrelationships psychological economic educational cultural and religious contribute to a unified whole a configuration or complex pattern moreover the documents which you may study may be personal documents like biographies diaries letters and memoirs of may be public documents like magazines and newspapers and other published data let us complete reflections and action 13.3 reflection and uh, action 13.3 after going through the three research methods it discussed in section 13.6 of th unit 13 why a sociologist or a social scientist would use a evolutionary skill method a comparative method and a historical and a historical method select a research topic and show how this topic uh, would be addressed in terms of each of the three methods of research personal documents this include all the published and unpublished information documented by individual for different purpose personal documents are not written in a scientific style they generally represent some ideas values and feelings extra in spite of being subjective and unscientific personal documents have been of value in uh, social research they provide information about contemporary social circumstances systems customs way of life etc you may come across the following types of personal documents biographies some great political leaders social reformers and eminent personalities write their autobiographies these provide useful information concerning social political religious and cultural conditions and the incidents of their time whatever the type of information biography provide a few valid and reliable pieces of information however the others might have tried to exaggerate or underrate incidents and their feelings intentionally they may have deliberate conceals concealed facts which may show their personality in a favorable or unfavorable perspectives diaries diaries are written with different intention some persons write diaries to remember important incidents of their life some others review their life others review their life from time to time and not in diaries the informations contained in a diary could be very useful in social research diaries are used as a technique of social logical research mainly in literate societies where it is not always possible to closely observe interactions you may urge your respondents to write their intentions in diaries for example qubit used these techniques on a sample of couples of a period of one week and found that the diaries generated useful data but not many respondents were willing to write diaries for not more than a week most diary writers have no intentions to publish them generally it is expected that information recorded in a diary will be reliable certain limitations of diaries are a as diary writing is mainly personal therefore it does not include detail and complete descriptions of incident but information in a sketchy and rudimentary form as a rule a diary does not re record the ex context in which an incident has taken place this make it difficult for to interpret the incidents and understand their real meaning diaries b diaries are written irregularly and the slack connections in information it is very difficult to connect different incidents and feelings described in them letters letters are the medium of expressions on feelings like dislikes plans attitude desires emotions ambitions and also important incidents of life they tell about the interrelationship such as friendship love and martial affairs tensions etc marital affairs ten mash marital affairs tensions etc some notable limitations of letters are a it is difficult to collect private letters b letters do not provide detail and complete description of incidents next memoirs some persons are intended in writing memoirs of their travels ex excavations exploration etc such memoirs provide useful information in social research public or official documents you may collect public documents of the following types from some government or non government institutions one records most government and non government department preserve so many types of records consisting of important information are important sources of information for social research 
published data you may find several uh, sources of this kind of data for instant period periodical surveys concerning population rate of mortality birth rate marriage and divorce such published documents are very useful journals and magazine these are important public uh, documents including informations on various aspect which can be utilized in social research this source of information is quite reliable newspapers the published news discussions on contemporary issues report of meeting and conferences essays and articles letters to editors are good sources of information and have a good deal of reliability the collection of primary data is in empirical situations in all one of the two kinds of methods depending on the nature of data required these are survey method and field work method as noted earlier we will discuss these methods in details in other books blocks of mso 2 13.7 conclusion unit that has been provided uh, the perspective the prospective researcher an elementary introduction to methods commonly used in social research 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 is indeed almost everywhere and uh, therefore it is a good idea to learn research methods which help us appreciate how we come to know what we take to be facts someone somewhere makes a study and offers the world to his or her findings on the subject of research for accuracy reliability and better usability of your research you would employ scientific method we have discussed elements of methodology that provide us with an overall frame of conducting research and selecting appropriate tools for going through the research procedure we discuss some of the commonly employed social research methods while for other methods we will go to units in block 5 and block 6 or block 2 and in block 7 of book 3 of mso 2 further readings ellen g and g skinner 1991 handbook for research studies research students in social sciences baby e 1989 the practice of social research words with publishing company belmont california so this is the end of the chapter